Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass, time is past, when Samuel was old, that he made, he made his sons judges over Israel. Not God. All of sin. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel. And we got a contradiction. And the commentaries throw this right out the Bible. First Chronicles 6 8. And they go run into the Hebrew, and they go running in this corner, and they go run into that corner. First Chronicles 6 28. And the sons of Samuel, there he is. The firstborn, Bashnai, and Abiah. Well, it says Bashnai, it doesn't say Joel. But there's no one in the Bible who has two names. Simon, Peter, Saul, who was Paul. It's not allowed to have two names. And the people who do this, do they have a first, middle, last name? There's no contradiction, just another name. But when we run to this verse, you miss the entire content of the verse. Now we're going to just go through this real quick. Start in verse 16. We're not going to read this whole list. But the sons of Levi, that's one of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the priest class. Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. All right, these are son, three sons of, of Levi. The priests are the sons of Aaron. Gershom, Kohath, and Merari are of the Levites, but they're not priests. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And we'll verse 17. These be the names of the sons of Gershom. Libni, Shimni, sons of Kohath, were Amram, that name sounds familiar. There's Moses and uh, Aaron's and Miriam's father. And his are Hebron, Israel. The sons of Arari, Mahalai, and Mushai. These are the families of the Levites, according to their fathers. And of Gershom, Libni, the son of Jazeb, of his son, Zimna, his son, Joel, his son, Ido, his son, Zero, his son, I'm just reading quick, Joel, his son, the sons of Kohath, Aminadab, his son, Korah, his son, Asher, his son, Elkanan, his son, Ebasheph, his son, Asher, his son, Tephith, his son, Uriel, his son, Uzziah, his son, Shaw his son, and the sons of Elkanah. Huh? Yep. Amasai and Hosai. And for Elkanah, the sons of Elkanah, so far his son, and Nathan his son, Elbel his son, Jorham his son, Elkanah. Look at me, Elkanah's there are. This is the one that's hand his husband. His son and the sons of Samuel. Samuel is the son of Elkanah and Hannah. Run them up to Kohath. Samuel is a Levite, but he's not a priest. And he comes from Kohath. And if you go back and look in the law, Kohath were the ones that carried the ark. Gathered the table, carried the table, carried the, 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 the golden altar, carried the candlestick, carried the brazen altar, but they never got to see it. And in this line, we have Samuel, and then Samuel firstborn last night, and Abiah. So to say Samuel is not a priest is true, but he is a Levite. And when God shut off the high priest, Eli and his sons, he still went to Levi and called. So when you open up in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1, 
Now these are certain men of Rivna Zavovin of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkina, the son of Jerome, the son of Eel, and Uronim. So there he is. And what people see in the Bible, oh, is a contradiction. The Bible, you miss the jewels of what the Bible has to really say. Oh, see, this thing is wrong. So, we look at this, and I'll kind of decide to draw them. Come back over to uh, First Chronicles 6. Jehoram, his son, and Elkanah, his son, the son, there he is. Oh, look at the Bible. Oh, his, his son's name doesn't match. But verse 16 all the way down to 28, there's a nugget. And the nugget is. All right, so what if I said, as far as Jesus Christ, well, his name is Emmanuel. Is that biblically correct? Well, it's Jesus. It also said, he, so you tell me Jesus can't have two names. Gabriel the angel is wrong. You should call his son Nathan, you shall call his name Jesus. And the Bible calls elsewhere, you shall call him Emmanuel. There are men in the Bible who's got more than one name. And when we're talking about Americans, changing and correcting the Bible with the Hebrew, Americans have three names, most of them. A woman who is married has four names. What's the big problem that you gotta go run into the Hebrew? I'm just gonna take for granted the guy had another name. Now watch this when we go back to 1 Samuel 8. Now let's watch something here. Let's see Samuel's dedication of the Lord. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel. Joel means Jehovah is God. That's a good standing. I could not find a name for the other one in 1 Chronicles 6. They talk so much garbage and all that, I couldn't, couldn't find a cross reference for it. Joel. The El is God, and the Joe is Jehovah. And the name of his second, Abiah, Jehovah or Lord is my father. Now, where is Samuel standing when these boys are born? He's in God. He loves God. He gives his boys the names of God. Jehovah. And they were judges in Beersheba. That's down south. He made them judges. Now, here's where the problem lies. And his sons walked not in his way, right way, doing right. But turned aside after liquor, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. Now, after that, wouldn't you think, now at this point, you would take Jehovah's God and say, you know what, I'm taking that name off that boy. Kaniah. His name is Jekaniah. Uh, Jeconiah, excuse me, Jeconiah. And God says, that king is so wicked, take that Jah off his name. Take Jehovah off his name and just couldn't call him Kaniah. It happens in the Bible. And I'm going to assume, and I can be wrong, that Samuel looks at his boy and says, man, you are not an ambassador of that name. Let me use expression again. This is my own thinking. You can throw this in the garbage. Your name is Mud now, okay? You do not represent God. Or he just gave him another name. Maybe he called him one name. Maybe his mother called him another name. Maybe it's a name. I don't know, but people are not allowed to have two names. Now, Eli had terrible children too. And Eli was a bad father. Bad. Samuel was good. Samuel loved the Lord. And you cannot guarantee, say, well, if I serve the Lord and I do right, my children are going to do right. The Bible proves that wrong. David, God says, a man after my own heart. Ever look at his children? 
we are not guaranteed by children if we serve the Lord and do right that they're going to be right. And it says, there's a, and I'm not going to quote it verbatim, but, but it says in Proverbs, you know, if I train up my child in the way he goes, well, my child went wrong. Yeah, but you put that standard in his heart already. And if you put that standard in his heart by your prayers and by you doing right, it's hard to kick against the pricks, isn't it, Paul? So if boys turn out wrong, and if you want to look at verses here as far as the ministry, um, these boys are in the ministry. Let's let's take a look at them. Acts three, verse three. I, I mean, excuse me. Let's First Timothy three three. We're going to go to Acts. First Timothy three three. Now, Samuel and his boys do not have Timothy. But, 1 Timothy 3.3, 3, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, of filthy liquor. <laughs> Paul has the filthy, gained by ill sense, uh, gambling, defrauding people. That's not to be a minister. Well, that's what they were doing. Titus, uh, wait, verse 8, 1 uh, Timothy 3.8. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given too much wine, not greedy of filthy liquor. There's one thing with the ministry, whether you are the pastor or you're the deacon, you're to have an honest living. Titus 1.7. The book of Titus. The epistle of Titus 1.7. So, when you when you read these things here, I'm not trying to turn. What do you do with TV evangelism, where all they want is your money? Call one eight one eight hundred number, and if you book, we'll give you a prayer rag. For this prayer thing, we'll get if you give if you buy our book twenty four ninety nine plus eighteen dollars for shipping and handling. What do you do with that when the Bible says they're not to be doing that? And more so if you got a woman, when the Bible says a woman is not to serve the authority, but chapter 1, verse 7 in Titus, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self willed not soon angry, not given to wine, no strength, not given to filthy liquor. Paul wrote that to Timothy, he writes it to Titus, and it's in our Bible. And when a man or woman, it's wrong, just as wrong, gets up in the ministry to make it a merchandise, it's wrong. And the act of Jesus, when they did that in the temple, he went in there and he's kicking all over the tables and there's, there's dung over the place and there's coins rolling across the floor. What would Jesus do? Acts 8.18 Acts 8.18 And for some You know the ministry is profitable And I mean as in monies Not telling the future You can find some sucker that You're just going to sit behind the decks Get up once or twice a week And get the blah 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 message that you pay for you know some of those people you listen to, they have a writing staff just as much as Johnny Carson had a writing staff. There's a well-known preacher, and I'm not going to give his name. He's dead now. And I was shocked to learn from, from good people that I trust and believe. That guy had a writing staff, and one of the people I knew was asked to be on that writing staff at a young age. You say, what's that? That guy didn't write any of his messages. People wrote it for him. He just read it off. They make fun of uh, President Obama when he did off the... I forget what that thing is called. Teleponter. That's what some of your preachers are doing today. And been doing. In Acts chapter 8, verse 18. When Simon saw that through laying on the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. And then Peter gives him a little tongue lash. 
you're not to get into the ministry for gain. And these guys are judges, so what's happening? They're going after Looker, they're making money, but they're not supposed to be making money. How? Maybe they had a 1 800 number flash across. I don't know. And took bribes and perverted judgment. They are judging people. Hey, you know, if I give you a couple of shekels, will you tell me that I'm innocent and you're guilty? Yeah, sure, no problem. There's a mess. Eli's sons are having adultery. Samuel's sons are having a box of offering. Buy our CDs and our tapes right here at the door. Then all the elders of Israel, they got gotten angry. They've had it. They had it with Eli. They had it with Samuel. Gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ribna. Now look at verse 17 in chapter 7. And he returned, and his return was to Ribna. For there was his house. Now he had a circuit of Bethel, Gilgal, and Mizpah in his house of Rimmon. They go to his house. And they say, Preacher, we've got a problem. And said unto him, Behold, thou art old. You're getting ready to die. And we need somebody who's going to take care of us. Because it ain't going good. Thy sons walk not in thy ways they're not following your example which they're saying is samuel is doing a good job and i would be worried i am concerned the lord tarries where the church is going tomorrow and i mean into the future because the idiots they got there in the churches today and the youth group pastors of the churches today what they're teaching this children that the church will be ruined and they need to stand up and say you know what you're doing with the youth in our church? We got to do something else. I mean, these children are going to be 20, 30, and 40 years old. We're going to have to have bounce houses for them to come. We're going to have to cheer openly. We're going to have to wave our hand. We're going to have to have plays and all for the adults that were once children. Now make us a king. This is the first time this has happened. From the time that Israel came out that night of the Passover, God has been their king. Now they tried a couple times say, let's let's get a captain. Let's get a captain and go back. They are, and we're going to see in a moment, they're outright right now rejecting God. Right now they are in a theocracy. That's God. Theo. That's God. Anything pertaining to God. They want a monarchy, a man. God says, be holy for I am holy. And man, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, where do you think they're going to go with this? Make us a king to be judge us like all the nations, unlike God. We want to be like the Gentiles. We want a king. All the nations didn't have God. They had gods. They had goddesses. They didn't have Jehovah. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king. They're asking for a king over God to judge us. And look at Samuel. This is how well Samuel and Samuel prayed unto the Lord. I'm going to say right now that, like I said, I'm, I, I am taking it, throwing the garbage can. They are in his house, standing or seated, and they say, we want a king. And I'm going to say right then and there, Samuel says, God, and the Lord said unto Samuel, immediately answer Samuel. And if they are in that room and he's in the same room they are, they can't hear God. Hearken unto the voice of the people, that's the elders, and Israel. They're representing the people. 
and all that they say unto thee. Give them a king. For they have not rejected thee, but have rejected me. Acts 9 4. Let's see what that is. Acts 9 4. Samuel, it's not you. In Acts chapter 9, verse 4. Here's an interesting thing where God takes personally. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Saul didn't persecute Jesus, but he persecuted Christians. And what God is saying to Samuel here, it's not you, Samuel. You're doing a good job. They've outright rejected me. Who does a better job? That I should reign over them. Again, write down theocracy. According to all the works which they have done since the day I brought them out of Egypt. There you go. Pass overnight. Even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee, Samuel. So God has set Samuel in the position, and God comes up to Samuel and says, It's not you. It's not what you've done. I don't care about your sons. I don't care how, what they're doing. It's not you, Samuel. It's their wicked heart. Now, therefore, hearken unto their voice. How be it? Yet protest. Oh, look at that protest in the Bible. Solemnly unto them. Maybe they'll change their mind. And show them the manner of the king that shall reign over. Okay, paragraph. Now this is why Samuel is good and God approves of him. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. He's like Moses. Everything God said, he told him. And he says, unto the people that asked of him for a king, I am going to assume that they're in that room still. We want a king. Oh, Lord God. All right, Samuel. Calm down. It's not you. Open up your eye. Whatever you're doing, face them and give them the riot act. Okay, they want a king. You tell them what kind of king they're going to get. You warn them. And Samuel tells all the words. Now, have we seen what Samuel has done? And what Samuel is doing? In chapter 3, verse 19, and he did let none of the words fall to the ground. In chapter 21 of verse, chapter 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 21, and the Lord revealed himself to Samuel by the word of God. And over here, whatever God said, he told. So verses 11 down to 18. Is what God told Samuel. And he said. This will be the manner of the king. That shall reign over you. Number one. He will take your son. And appoint them for himself. Will be a dictator. For his chariots. To be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots. Horsemen, footmen, army, soldier, secret service. They're going to protect him. Everyone had an armor barrier. Jonathan, the son of Saul, had his own armor barrier. He didn't even carry his own artillery. Verse 12. And he will appoint him captains over thousands, captains over fifties, armies, and will set them to ear his ground. 
He's not going to harvest his own. He's not going to sow his own ground. He's not going to have nothing to do for planting. He's going to have them plant for him. And he's going to have his own army. It's going to be a draft. You got a letter from the king. You are now in the military. You got a letter from the king. You are now going to work in his fields. And to reap his harvest. And to make his instruments of war. And instruments of his chariots. Defense contractor. Right there. Everything has to do with war. Somebody's got to build it. I'm going to make you guys do it. And he will take your daughters. You thought it was just the males, the daughters. To be a confectionary. That's sugar. That's the first and last time that word shows up in the Bible. That's cakes, sugars, cupcakes. The fancy tancy little torts. So he's going to eat delicately and fancily. And your daughters are going to make it for him. Honey, did you bring any of those apple tarts that you made for the king? Uh, he ate them all. Everybody in the kingdom ate them all. Oh, I wish you would have brought me one. Yeah, king. And to be cooks. That's the last and first time that word shows up. You would think that word with cooks would be more in the Bible, wouldn't you? And it shows up as a cook. I mean, as a, under the king. He will have cooks for him. And to be bakers. So he's going to have a culinary delight of people to make him and his people food. And he will take your fields, eminent domain, government control of your property. We will give you five bucks. You're gonna, we're gonna take it. You can't say nothing about it. The laws can't do nothing for it. But that's not been practiced in America. That's what a king does. We have a president. It's the same thing. Matter of fact, they wanted to make George Washington president. I mean, king. And your vineyards will be his. And your olive yards will be his. Even the best of them. I don't want that one over there. It's dying. That one. Ahab or Ahaz, because which one of the ones married to Jezebel, tried that with Nabal. But he did it right. I'll try to buy it from me. He's like, no, I can't do it. Jezebel went in there and lied about the guy and got the guy stoned and said, honey, get out of your bed and suck your thumb. Here's the title deed. So the queen can do it too. The vineyards and y'all, even the best of them, and gave them and give them unto his servants. Won't be yours no more. This is the king you guys want. You want him? And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards. Taxes. Now remember, God says the tenth of the seed also goes to him, the first. So now you got to tax and tithe to God. According to the law, you want a king? You're going to lose more of your crops to the king. Now, under theocracy, you can give it to God. Under monarchy, you got to give it to God and now give it to a man. That's what you want. Which one would you choose? If you had to give up, let's say you grew a complete field of tomato plants. And God says, listen, I want the best first fruits of your tomato plants. And you bring them at this time of the year and you give them to my priest. And all the rest you can have. And if you want to give more to the priest, that's up to you. I, I take that as, as a love offering. But the rest after the, after the first fruits, it's yours. You can have them all. That's theocracy. Monarchy. You give the ten first fruits to God, to the priest. You go home, you start picking, next thing you know, the government agents show up. You got ten wagons there. Two of those wagons are mine. Long city came. Matter of fact, you know what? You got such a great crop this year. I'm going to take your whole field. Move out. In minute domain. You want theocracy or you want monarchy? 
You want a God that says, be holy for I'm holy? Or do you want a man that is does good, doesn't, doesn't do any good? He's a sinner. He's not righteous. He's unlike God. Everything opposite of God. Your vineyard, your servant. He will take the tenth of your seed, of your vineyard, and give them to his officers and to his servants. He's got to pay everybody. He's got to pay the people that are under him, and he's going to pay them by the people who are under him. That's what's happened in America. That's what happens in England. He shall take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men, the draft, and your asses, your animals, and put them to his work. So now you got loss of employees. They've gone to the government. He will take the tenth of your sheep. With theocracy, that would be 20%. That's a big chunk. That's a big chunk. And ye shall, and ye shall be his servants. I thought you were supposed to be a servant to God. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king which ye shall which ye shall have chosen you and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Now notice that in that day in the future prophecy reference. But God says, you want that king? Yeah. All right, here he is. Oh, I got too many pills. Oh, the taxes. Oh, God, I just lost my... God, help. I'm not listening. La, 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 la. Samuel recorded. La, 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 la. I'm not listening to you. I won't listen to you because you didn't want me. Proverbs 124. And when God's not going to listen to you... You're in trouble. Proverbs 124. And wisdom here is Samuel. I don't know if I said Samuel. I mean, I mean, Samuel. Proverbs 124. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Verse 26. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer, God speaking. Then they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge, where we are, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. That's exactly where we are now. And that was written by a king, King Solomon. You know King Solomon's advice back here? Okay, to the people of 1 Samuel chapter 8? You're foolish. You are foolish. Alright, verse 19, new paragraph. After all that, how many would say, raise their hands and ask what I want? Don't look good to me. I read right, God. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. Proverbs 1 24 and they said nay Satan said yay as God said they said nay to God's word but we will have a king over us Proverbs 14 12 <laughs> Proverbs 14 12 Proverbs has much to say Proverbs 14 12 From a king, Solomon, 14, 12, Proverbs. This is King Solomon. Too bad Proverbs wasn't written before. Sometimes I, sometimes I wonder if Proverbs should have been written before the law. But 14, 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know where Israel ends up right now? They have no king, they have no temple, and they kind of got a land. 
And they got look, looking forward to seven years of great tribulation coming up where God's going to say, yeah, 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 not listening. <laughs> you wanted that antichrist? <laughs> yeah, come on. Not listening. You got six more years. You got five more years. You got four more years. You got three more years. Two more years. One more. Are you guys ready for Jesus yet? Really? All right, go get him, son. Take your bride with you. There will not be a king from Kaniah until the Lord Jesus Christ sits on the throne of David in Jerusalem. That's what you guys want? Nay, but we will have a king over us. God's merciful. When did God ever say, I'm going to take these men, I'm going to take this property? When did God ever say that? Never. Go back and study the law. He never said that. He said the first fruits goes to the priests. That we also may be like all the nations. You mean the heathens? You mean the ones that are burning their babies? And that our king may judge us. You know what Bible kings they get, especially in Israel? Not one king in north Israel ever got right with God. And go out before us and fight our battles. David fought Saul, King Saul. And David became king after he fought King Saul, and King Saul fought him. We don't want God. We don't want God to fight our battles. That's what they're saying. So Samuel dies in battle. And many other kings die in battle. A couple kings go into battle and they're like, you don't belong here. Go home. No, I'm going to fight. And they end up dead. And Samuel heard all the words of the people. And he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. Lord, turns to the Lord again. You heard that, right? I don't have to repeat that. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man in, unto his city. And oh boy, chapter 9. Begins a mess. Hasn't been a mess. It's been a mess so far. It was a mess under Moses. It's going to be a mess again. What a mess. 